Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Not Your Average Church Girls Podcast with the Z. With the Z. I am Rody, and that is Shawnee. And this week, tell them what we are going to be talking about. I think we reverse roles because I normally say that to you. <laughs> but yeah, I know. It's okay. It's like you're having you're having a moment. I am. So I just felt like I should just jump in there. Thank you. And say it. Yes. Um, our topic for this episode is I believe God. Yes. And we believe God is going to help Sean and get it together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Just, yes. It took us a couple of tries to to get started. Um. Um, with this recording. How are you today? I'm doing just fine. How are you today? I'm okay. I am okay. Good. Yep, I am okay. I am okay. I think I believe God is a great topic because, as always, most people are going through some things, some things they want to share, some things they don't want to share, and, you know, I'm going through some things. So I have to listen to the topic this week of I believe God because you're like, hello, God, um, do you hear me? And I can say for myself recently, I'm always looking up something because I'm interested in so many things. But this past week, I have been extra interested in looking and seeing how deep the ocean really is and <gasps> how vast the universe really is. Oh, my and God. Rody. Yes. So have I. Oh, my. That's You should see my face. So did I. I don't know why. I just was like, <laughs> I'm one of those people, though. I research. I feel like I research very bizarre things. Um, Things that most people probably don't. So, like, I research how wax is formed or how mucus is formed or, or how deep is the ocean or how expansive is the universe. Like you said, like, it's just. So when you, when you said that, I was just like, I had my mouth wide open, like, what? Yes, my mom, I don't know if I probably have mentioned it before on here, my mom was a complete genius, and she was into everything. So since she was, I look up all kinds of stuff. And looking up the vastness of the ocean and the vastness of the universe of itself, um, the one person on their video put it this way. It said, it would be like, we believe that the universe was an actual average light bulb. But the universe is really the size of the planet Pluto. We just don't know it because we can't see that far. That's the comparison to it. So when you're saying, I have to believe God, you're like, Lord, if you did all of this, you've got these galaxies and the black holes and the supernovas and the stars, and you can see little old tiny me. Do you, do you care? Do you hear me? But when you're going through something, you have to keep telling yourself, I believe God. Now, there were times past when, you know, I would say, if I'm going through something, just say, thank God you're here. Thank God you're not in jail. You're not in the hospital. You're not in everything. And I can say for myself, I have gotten away from that. But I have to really get back to that point and say, Lord, Lord, I'm doing not as great as I want to, but at least I have a car to drive. You know, Lord, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z, but at least I have food on the table. It may not be the food that I want, but at least it's, you know, it's not the worst food. It's not the best I want, but you have to keep believing God for what you, um... And also, what you're saying is appreciate where you're at. Because sometimes you may not be where you want to be, because obviously I'm not where I want to be, but I'm also not where I used to be. And I know sometimes people think that sounds cliche when people say that. I thank God I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. No, that's a real life situation. That's like depending on where you've been at in your life. Like if you've been to a, in a situation where you've been homeless, if you have an apartment, you're grateful for where you're at right now because you're no longer homeless. You're no 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 longer sleeping in a shelter or sleeping on someone's porch. You understand what I mean? So like Rody says, she's grateful for having food. It may not be steak that she, maybe she wants to eat or lobster. Maybe she wants to eat every single night. But guess what? She's not going to bed with hunger pangs. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. So I, I, like you, my my best friend causes me to remember no Shaniqua because I'm always so hard on myself. And she's like, you may not be where you want to be with goals and stuff like that, but look at all that you have done and accomplished, and you're not where you used to be at in life. And when I, I, I'm one of those people, I don't really think about my life in those terms too much. But when she started saying that, well, not the good parts of it, I should say. And when she started saying that, I started thinking about, like, you know, there was one period in my life where I had to, where I, I shouldn't say I had to, but I was living with someone else for maybe almost five years. So, when, you know, when Rody just said what she said, yes, I may not be in my mansion right now. But thank God, I'm no longer living with someone else. I'm in my own place where I pay my own rent. And that's a blessing to be able to come into your residence, yes. apartment, condo, whatever, and say, you know what? I can kick my shoes off at the door yes. if I want to. I don't have to walk on eggshells with someone that I'm living with. I don't have to, you know, I've, lived, I've had to live with someone else, too, that I, for a while that I did not, um, you know, you're grown. You don't want to necessarily have to live with someone else unless you want to. Right. So if you feel like you're walking on eggshells with someone, or maybe you just want to sit around in your house coat, but you feel like you have to sit around in full pajamas and slippers or the person's going to say something to you. Right. Girl, yes. It's not easy. It's like you want to, maybe you want to eat Doritos in bed, but you can't because the person that you're living with will yell at you or fuss at you or, you know, maybe even threaten to put you out. Right. And, and some <clears throat> people are, you know, I'm not saying everybody because there are some really very kind people out here who allow you to live with them and don't give you a bunch of right. um, there are. foolishness. But there are some people who the slightest issue. They could have had a bad day at work. They could have got cut off in traffic. They could have ordered a large drink and the people gave them a small and they will come home and say, well, you got to get out. And you're like, what? Listen, that, no, what, no lie. My mom, <laughs> my mom, I'm, I'm thinking about growing up. My mom used to be that kind of person. Oh, like literally she would be <laughs> not obviously not me, but, but like someone, if she was dating someone, it could just be one thing. Say that if she asked for $500, they gave her 475 She'd be like, you got to get out. <laughs> like, it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing because it's really not funny. But, because hindsight is twenty twenty, and maybe you're seeing the humor in it now that you didn't see then. It's just like, I, I don't understand people. Like Now, I can understand you giving people, like even somebody living with you, you still have your rules for your home. Because and even though that person's an adult, you try to respect them. Yes, because what if this person you come in my if someone came to live with me, I don't believe in smoking, I don't believe in drinking. But if the person who wants to live with me, if they believe in that, they need to know they can't smoke and drink in my household. Now, if I was to catch you smoking or drinking in my household, the first time I'm like, hey, listen, you know, I already told you before you moved here, I don't do those things. My house is safe, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. This is what I would say. Um. Please do not do not let us have this discussion again because it's going to be a problem next time. If I catch you again, if I choose to say, you know what, you have to go, that's on you. If I don't have, if I don't show you any compassion, if I don't show you any grace, if I don't show you any mercy, I showed you all of that the first time when I caught you. Exactly. Because some people, you have to prove to them. Because some people move in on you and start trying to take over. <laughs> yeah. So, my situation, I had an unexpected situation that, you know, arose today, unex really unexpectedly. And I immediately, you know how the enemy is, he wants to cause you to have fear. Panic attack. And uh, anxiety. Yeah. And, and I'm one of those people, I can go... My mind can go left or go right real quickly. Like, I can go all the way to the extreme really quickly. Like, it's, 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 it's really bad. Like, so, and I immediately, I thank God for this, really. I thank God that he allowed me to catch myself and said, nope, nope, 
I am not going to worry. I am going to believe God. And I kept saying it. I'm going to believe God. I am not going to stress about this situation. I'm going to pray over myself. I'm going to anoint myself. And I'm going to believe God. And I kept saying it. And next thing I know, this is no lie to you. The fear that was trying to happen. The panic attack or the anxiety that was coming up in me. All of the negative thoughts. Like within, I mean, like within a minute of me finding out this information, this is how bad it can be get for me. Um, God immediately allowed me to combat that. But nope, nope, I believe God. And just saying, I believe God. I believe God. When I tell you, it gave me encouragement. It gave me strength. It gave me peace. And people, if you've never been through it, you're like, why would her mind just go to the left? Because mine just does that too. Anything, now, if somebody tells me something good is going to happen, I question them. <laughs> and I, and I, just, I, I equate it to that I'm a very analytical person. And I, 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 I'm, and I know somebody was like, well, how can you be saved and have faith if you, it, it's weird. All the thing I can tell you, Having the kind of mind that I have, or people that have minds like me, I, I can't explain it to you. I will explain it to you. Okay, thank you. Very quickly, um, without going into too much detail, if you had the type of childhood that I had, and it wasn't all bad, but there were some times where you're like, well, good grief. All I ever, you know, you don't get the constant encouragement, and our generation didn't get that constant encouragement the way this generation does. Not at so, all. You are, you are, you're more willing to believe bad things than you are good things. Absolutely. And I, and is it, is it because, is it because, do you think it's because, well, you grew up in church and I didn't. Yeah. So I know our um lives were different in that way. But do you think it also depends on if you, if you were accustomed to seeing bad stuff more than you were able to, accustomed to seeing good stuff? I think for my for me in my life, that, I don't think it's that. I think it's like you know. I said you, you didn't get constant encouragement, and a lot of times, we, you know, if your mom said no, that was it. Right. If your dad said no, that was it. Right. There was no like trying to convince them. Oh, why can't I have X, Y, and Z? If the adult in your life said no, that was it. A lot of times, even it may not have even been your parents. If a school counselor couldn't see the potential in you going to college. They might encourage, oh, you, you should just learn a trade. There's nothing wrong with trade school. Trade school people make a lot of money. But And not only that, they're trying to they're trying to encourage a lot of people right now to start going to trade schools because oh, yeah. of the money that you can make over than going to college. Because there's people that go to college that have four de- four year degrees and still making thirty five, forty five thousand dollars a year. And I'm not I'm not saying anything bad against that. I'm just saying what it is. Mm-hmm. So you can say, well, how could you grow up in church and be surrounded by ministers and still feel like the bad stuff is easier to believe? Because sometimes the bad stuff happens more often than you might feel the good stuff happens. Well, that's what I was asking you. That's That was my question to you. Do you think it's like that because... More bad stuff has happened than the good stuff, so you're so easy. Even if you see examples in the Bible, like Joseph, when he was thrown into jail, when Potiphar's wife accused him of trying to sleep with her. Now, most people would be down in the dumps. They wouldn't have the attitude that Joseph had. They wouldn't say, you know what, the Lord's just going to work it out. He was in that jail for years. For years. For years. Because remember, he even got forgotten about with the butler. The butler forgot about him. Yes, the butler did forget about him. It wasn't until he was able to interpret the dream. The dream, right. He wasn't able to do. It wasn't until he was able to interpret the dream for the jailer. And then when Pharaoh couldn't interpret his dream, that the butler who had been out of jail for several years, he was like, oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. Then it, it, it dawned on him. Oh, I, it, oh my God, I been me to tell you about this dude. What? You were supposed to tell her, told her about the dude two years ago. That's how people see you. So the fact that you see stuff, you're like, Lord, I've heard the old saints say, I've never seen you see begging bread. But then somebody is out there working two or three jobs and they still can't make ends meet. And it's not God punishing you. It feels like it sometimes. 
time that it's not. So you're saying, well, Lord, I go to church, I serve on the choir, I serve on the usher board, I make sure that I give 10, sometimes more percent of my income to the church to help build a church. Why on earth am I struggling so hard? And you have to keep telling yourself, I believe what God said. God can't lie. If you have to have your own personal mantra, sometimes my personal mantra is God can't lie. And you just have to keep telling yourself that. That, that's what I mean when I say believe, I believe God. Whatever, like she said, whatever it is that's going to help you to get to focus on God instead of focusing on your situation. Because sometimes we have to shift our focus. It's not always an easy thing to do. You say, well, God can't lie, God can't lie. How come this hasn't happened yet? The one thing I think is one of the hardest things for Christians to understand is. Yes, God can't lie. However, he does not give you, unless, sometimes he does, but a lot of times he does not give you a time frame. If he says, you know, Shawnee's podcast, her businesses, her merchandise is going to blow up, and you're like, well, okay, if the Lord told me that, it should happen within the next six months. And you're sitting there, and you're, you know, trying to, Ad space or telling people are going to um, different shows and you know putting up your flyers and you get nothing and you're like Lord was that really you? Maybe it was just something I wanted to hear and it's so hard to discern that voice but you keep having to tell yourself if God said it it's true He can't lie but He didn't tell me when. It's really hard to to go from now to then. Because it's called the process. And what I always tell people, you have to, like, and I say this as someone who have had to go through many processes. I'm in many processes right now. The process is not easy. Going through the process no. is not easy. But I always tell people, it's like this. Imagine you in real life. You need to get to a destination. Whether Say that you're trying to get on, you driving and you're going on vacation. But you have to go over this bridge or you have to go through this tunnel. And everything is going smooth. Then suddenly you hit a lot of traffic. Like, and through, you can't DC traffic is horrible. And especially like on a bridge, you're nowhere near a exit where you can't get off. And and you're in a tunnel, you know, normally it's long and dark. You can't move. What do you do? You have no other choice but to trust the process. That eventually you're going to get through that and get to your destination. Just like when we hear these stories about people being stuck on highways literally for 5, 6, 20. Like I just read an article. People were stuck on the highway for like 20 something hours. People have ran out of gas. Being in those tunnels in New York. So imagine doing that. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, you may get angry. Yes, you may get, become hungry and irritable and all these things. But guess what? You can't make a U-turn. You can't back up because you have a whole load of cars behind you. There's two other you cars behind you. You, you, can't, you can't get off, off the ramp or off the exit. So what do you do? You have to trust the process. Regardless of how angry you get, regardless of how frustrated you get, guess what? It doesn't make it go any faster. Just because you're angry doesn't make that process of cars moving faster any easier. No. You just have to sit there and you have to put on your big girl underwear or your big boy underwear and you have to sit there and you have to deal with it. And that's how it is in the spiritual. No, it's not easy when we're going through these things spiritually. When we're waiting on God. And when God, for example, God told me to start my business um, um, in 2018. I'm still struggling. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm, and people are like, oh, yo, I know my words have power. But I'm telling you what it is right now. It's still a struggle. I'm still trying to get my footing. And I know, and like what Rhodey said a few minutes ago, it's so true because I deal with that even right now 
And I have to be like, you know what, Shanique? Well, I know it was not my own thoughts. I know it was God that told me to. Like, I have to keep speaking to myself and telling myself that I know it was God. I know it was not me because I know I, I didn't even have a desire for a business. That's how come I know it wasn't me because I had no desire to want a business. And so I know it was God, but the enemy will try to get you all crossed up and get you to um, start doubting God. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to doubt God. He wants you to doubt that God can do it for you. He wants you to doubt that God can make a way for you. He wants you to doubt that God can open doors for you. He wants you to doubt that God can heal you or deliver you or set you free. But you have to know this, that the devil is a liar. That our God, it, let me tell you something. I, if God said it, you can take that all the way to the bank and you can cash that. If God said it, you can believe it, that it's going to come to pass. Now, the problem is most of us get ahead of, uh, of ourselves. Because just because God told us something, we think it's going to happen right then. Right then. Yes. And that's, yes. not always the, that's not always the case. It can happen literally two decades from now. That is true. I I just I think I spoke said this to Rody recently. I think it was Rody I was speaking to, and I saw this um, Instagram post of this man. He had given his life to Jesus Christ. The wife said, "I had been praying for this for sixty yes. something years. Sixty something years she had been praying for her husband to give his life to Jesus Christ." And it, it, that, that talk about long suffering. That's what you call long suffering. Long. And if you're anything like me, a week can seem like a long time. Yes. <laughs> things I have been praying for. I have been wanting to own my own home. I don't. I've never owned a home yet. Nope. I've wanted to do a lot of things. It hasn't happened yet, and it doesn't mean that the Lord didn't hear me. But me, just being me. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about anybody else on this planet. I am a very easily frustrated person. You could ask people who are close to me, they will tell you, quick, I can go, is there, it's not happening? Okay, boom, I'm done. Because I just want stuff to happen right then and there. Patience has never been my strong suit. And I'm different. And I'm not saying that I can't get frustrated, but I think I realized for my life, that nothing happens in my life easily. Like really, honestly, okay. like nothing happens in my life like, like everything I get, I have to work extremely hard for. I have to pray a lot for it. Like, my life is not easy. And I realized that even from a child, like, nothing in my life has been easy. So, I, I even with my business, I kind of had a realization, though, that, listen, nothing in your life has ever been easy. Like, nothing just, like, God said it. And it, except for when I once, one time I prayed within myself, I said, God... It would be funny if you would allow someone to give me a car. And I remember I chuckled to myself because I had I didn't really think it was going to happen because I had never I had never experienced it before. And I never heard of anyone who has experienced something like that before. Well, lo and behold, I was working for a local bank in my in the state that I'm that I live in. And it was a um, young lady who had just started working there. And she walked up to me and handed me her car keys and said, God told me to give you my car. And I said, oh. what? She said, God told me to give you. I'm about to cry. Oh, my God. God told. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, God told me to give me to give. I can't even get this. Again. So God told me give to give you, you to give you my car. And I said, I was still like, what? She said, yes. Do you know that girl went six months without having a vehicle herself? Of having to depend on people to... And she had a small child, just like I had a small child. So she had to depend on people to take her, drop her off to work, pick her up from work. Just like I was... Well, I, 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 had, I only depended on DART. But <laughs> um, it goes to show you... That God will show up for you. And I remember her name, Dawn Jackson. 
Dawn Jackson, wherever you at, I still pray for you, girl. And I pray that the blessings of the Lord are upon your life up to this day. Thank you for being obedient. So, and that's for anyone out there. If you know God is telling you to do something, it could be to your hater. It could be someone that you know hates your guts. If God is telling you to go and bless that person, be obedient and do what God is telling you to do. You never know how you may turn that person. Hate them too. Huh? I said the person hates you and you hate them too. <laughs> but sometimes that's the case. Sometimes you may have hate that person too. Or sometimes that person may just be hating you unfairly. Like you never did anything to that person. And that person just hates you because of who you are. Or who they think you may be. Exactly. So, um. That was my little, that was my giggle. Just, um. You know, they hate you and you hate them back. I mean, in, in reality, that, that happens sometimes. You know, we, we don't always love everyone. We're supposed to love oh. everyone, but the truth is we don't always... And some people make it extremely difficult to love them. Some people are so hard to love. Yeah, some people are very hard to love. And um, and sometimes, you know, you hear pastors and preachers act like it's, it's the easiest thing to do. Oh, you're supposed to love everyone because... Yes, we know the Bible tells us to do so. And we're supposed to be obedient to the word. But it's not always that easy. It's not always very easy just loving people who are just hateful, who are just mean, who are just... No matter how nice you try to be to them, they're just nasty. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, for me, I really had that I believe God testimony today that I could have gotten into a deep depression I could have gotten into a state of fear and stayed in that state of fear I could have gotten into a state of hopelessness and stayed in that state of hopelessness um or sadness but because of God he did not allow and this is why it's important, too, to read the word of God. For when you are going through difficult times, you can have something to lean on. Because it's hard to lean on the promises of God if you don't know the promises of God. If you don't, if you never um, read the word of God or listen to the word of God, you don't know that God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. You won't, you won't know these things. So for me today, I'm grateful to God that he immediately allowed me to snap out of it because he knows me and he knows how I can go to the extreme really quickly. But he snapped me. It's like he literally, just when the devil thought he had me, it's like God just came and grabbed me out of that state. Like, nope, not today. Not today, Satan. And that's how I feel. It was like a not today Satan type of situation. I'm going to believe God. And whatever your situation is, whatever you may be going through, if, if, regardless of the circumstances, it could be some unforeseen circumstances. You may receive some bad news or potentially bad news like I did today. Um, you have two choices. Either you're going to allow Satan to win or you gonna trust God? You gonna believe God? What are you gonna do? And it's not. I'm not saying it like it's easy all the time, cause it's not. I just so happened God just really gave me the strength today that I was like, nope, you will not defeat me today, cause I really felt in myself that it was kind of one of those situations, Rody, when my mom went through her situation a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago, where I really should have been crying and like hysterical over the situation but I had the peace of God. It kind of was one of them situations that I should have been in another state. However, God did not allow me to go that way. He allowed me to truly put my faith in him, put my trust in him. And that's my testimony of how God brought me out and had me. And guess what? It's not a um, one time type of situation. No. <laughs> Because I still have to go through testing and stuff like that. So I still have to go through a process. But within that process, I have to still keep my mind on God and keep saying, I believe God. So it's not just 
a today situation or an hour ago situation. It's like I have to keep seeing that. And that's how we all have to be through all, our, out of all, through all of our situations. We have to get to the place where we're like, you know what? Yeah, it sucks right now. Life sucks. You may not have any money in, in your bank account. You may have a disconnection notice. You may have that little yellow envelope. Yo, you may have a repossession notice saying they're about to repossess your vehicle. And yes, you're crying. Yes, you may not know how you're going to pay for your children's daycare. I'm yeah, sorry. Especially if you've worked hard, you've gotten a better job, you saved up your money, you paid your bills, and you really don't understand how on earth you got back to the situation again. It's not easy. People, like Shanique was just saying, people make it seem like, oh, it's so easy. All I have to do is remember that God has me. But it's not always that easy. It's not easy at all. Like, it, it, it's a fight. Like, it's a fight for me. This is, I, I'm speaking for Shaniqua. It's a fight and a determination to to not stay stuck in, in that place of, especially when you're in a place of lack, when you, when, you, when you need something for God. And that's whether you need him financially, whether you need him, um, Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, however you need God. It's not always easy because God doesn't always just come because you call on his name. Sometimes it's a process. It really is a process of getting to draw closer to him. And can we say for people who say, if you say things like that, then you must not really believe even David who wrote quite a few chapters in the Bible. I'm not sure if it was in the wrong but oh Lord, how long? I've asked you, I've prayed, I've fasted, I don't know what else to do. And, you know, I keep asking you and keep asking you to help me with this problem, and the problem is still here. Do you hear me? Do you not like me? What is going on? That sounds I like a... Right that's, that sounds like a lot of my prayers, but I believe that's one of the one of the psalms, if I'm not mistaken. But it sounds like so many of my prayers, like all I kept seeing was myself. But <laughs> I do believe um, it was one of the um, psalms. That's what I believe, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. I think it was one of the psalms. <clears throat> that David did right. So it's not like, oh, everybody in the... If you think everybody in the Bible just prayed and it worked out, then you really haven't read the Bible. And and don't listen to people about Job, because people 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 forget people they I mean because really I I really get really perturbed when people talk about Job. They, they I believe people overuse. They and they really they do because it's like they forget about a lot of chapters where Job was having a pity party, where Job even cursed the day that he was born. And people, in, in case you don't know. The book of Job has 42 chapters. Four, 42. So that's a lot of chapters. But most people preach from chapter 1 and, and they preach from chapter 42. 42. Because at the end, I, I would say the last, I say all of, her, all of the chapter of 42 is Job kind of getting double for his trouble like a lot of church people. Like well, if, if, if it's not the entire chapter, it's like, the last half of the chapter. The last half. It's, it's, yeah. So it's at least half of it where people, oh, well, Job got double for his trouble. And in the beginning. And I hate when people say that too. Because let's, let's, let's remind people. I always say this. And people are like, well, I know. I know. Well, no, we cannot brush over this. That he lost children. Regardless of how many children he had afterward. They can never replace the children that he lost. Never replace the children that he lost. You know what I'm saying? So when people say he got double for his children, no, wait, we need to stop saying that. Because he lost actual children. He yes, they were adult everything. children, but they were still his children. He lost everything. And in the first chapter of Job, he, when, when he lost his first set of children, people like to say, well, oh, he lost them. He rent his clothes and praised the Lord. That is true. We are not going to gloss over the fact that he did praise the Lord. But what we are trying to tell you is, Job was not entirely happy the whole time.
because if he was in Tyler the whole time, I very seriously doubt there would be 42 chapters. That, and that's my point. And the fact is, yes, he ripped his clothes and started praising the Lord. But guess what? After he praised the Lord, he still started having a pity party. So that means he didn't stay. I mean, what normal person would he? So that's my point. So he didn't stay in that state of praising the Lord through all those 42 chapters. No, he didn't. And even David, as much as all the songs that he has written about, I will exalt thee, or I will extol thee, or I will um, praise you, Lord, all that stuff. There was times where David went through a lot of stuff where he even had to act like he was crazy. If You know, there was a lot of stuff that he went through as well. So don't when you're going through your situation, don't allow anyone to cause you to feel bad about what you're going through. And yes, sometimes the stuff that we're going through, we may have put ourselves in that situation. For example, you may be going through something financial. Maybe you knew you know for a fact that you just lived above your means. You thought, oh, I make it seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year. I could go get me a one point five million dollar house. I could get me a Bentley, and I'm being I'm exaggerating. But I'm just saying, people sometimes live way above. Like, I just saw this post today. This young lady was kind of talking about what we're talking about now. Um, of how she's making a good living. But she, matter of fact, she said she makes, this is what she said. She said she brings home almost $1,600 every two weeks. And she said, but she's still living paycheck to paycheck. And she's struggling hard. She said, but then I realized. I'm the reason I'm in this situation because but I, she was able to say for herself right. what happened because a lot of people will put themselves in that situation and then they will blame everybody and everything. Exactly. No, it wasn't inflation. It was you. Right. It was you trying to um, stick up with the Joneses. If your friend said, you know, let's say your friend. And it doesn't even have to be people like, oh, it's people who aren't say they aren't this. No. Let's say at the church every Sunday, somebody wants to go out to the most expensive restaurant in town. And you know you can't afford it, but you don't want your friends and fellow church members to think that you're broke. So you're, oh, I'll go with y'all. I'll go with y'all. Even a couple of times you may have treated to dinner. You know you can't afford to treat to dinner. You exactly. You can't even be at the dinner. Exactly. Or how about this? When you know you already don't have any food at home, and maybe and maybe you've been praying, God, I need some food. God, I need some food. God allows somebody to come bless you with twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, fifty dollars in church. They bless you with that in church. You've been praying, God, I don't have any food. Now somebody said, Oh, we're gonna go to to Damon's. Remember when we used to have Damon's? We're gonna oh, go to wow. we're gonna go <laughs> we're gonna go to Damon's. And you're like, Okay, I'm gonna go too. Mind you, you know you don't have any food to eat um, for tomorrow, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, th for the rest of the week. But instead of you using wisdom and saying, no, no, I, I, I can't go this time. Uh, maybe I'll take, I'll go with you guys next time. And let me tell you what, I am the queen of, I won't make up an excuse. I'll just flat out tell you, I don't have any money and I won't go. And if people talk about you, they will say, well, what but at least they know, like, hey. But, and, and, it, and, it, and they shouldn't talk. If they're really, truly sisters and brothers in Christ, what is to talk about? Because somebody's saying, I don't have any money. Everybody, most people have, fall on hard times. And, and, and just because you're on hard times. Going out to and just because you're on hard times doesn't mean that you was living above your means. Sometimes you could be in a situation like myself. That happens to be sick a lot. And because you're maybe sick a lot, things happen with your finances. Sometimes you find yourself, sometimes you could have a nice size um, um, savings account. And you get sick and lose your job. Then you have to go through your savings. You have to use your savings. Because sometimes everyone, everyone is not eligible for a short-term disability or long-term disability. And even unemployment, depending on the exactly unemployment as well. And even for someone who may need social security benefits, sometimes people get denied one or two times 
And that could take oh, years okay. before someone can get approved. So all this time you went in to get approved either for your short term, long term, or even social security benefits, you can eat away at your savings. And that's how someone can become I'm sorry. I said you will. And that's how someone can become homeless. That's how someone can become um flat just broke, not having any money. Everyone is not living above their means. Some people are in situations or maybe someone was married at one point and now they're divorced and now they're on hard time. That happens to people. Divorce drains your finances because you have to dissolve bank accounts. You yes, assets. If you, had a, if you had a business together, if you had whatever together and plus, I work for attorneys. I have paralegal certificates. Those attorney fees can just evaporate anything you have. And especially if you don't have, and then, and even if you have a prenuptial agreement, depending on what state you get married in, because I hear California is the worst state to ever get married in. Oh, California's um, horrible. Um, um. Cause you, cause even women are getting upset because they have a, they pay an alimony to men and stuff. So that I digress. So my point is, we all can find ourselves in a situation, cause sometimes we all look at, you know, another person and think, oh, that person has an easy life. And I'm quite sure there's someone somewhere looking at each of our lives. Somebody's looking at Rody's life. Somebody's looking at my life and think, oh, we may have it easy. Whatever for, for for whatever reason, but I'm just saying for whatever reason, some it's always like that. You may not think that your life is easy, but for someone else who may not be at, even at your level where you're at in life, they're thinking, man, Rody and Tyler, they could just be loving the fact that the relationship that you have with your son, the closeness that you have with your son. That your son still wants to hang out with you and wants to be with you all the time, and you guys get to go places together. You guys yeah, get to have experiences so together. We, and we can be apart. People are like, oh my goodness, you guys get along so well. You don't want to be. We can be apart for days. It's just that when we're together, we actually enjoy each other. But see what I mean? So somebody somewhere could be looking at that and going, I wish I had that because my child is out there in the streets and I'm praying for God to bring my child out there from out the streets. My child is in prison right now. I'm praying for God to bring my child out of prison safely. My child, my child is in, uh, is in foster care because I can't get off this crack. I can't get off this crystal meth. I'm just saying there's always someone that may think your situation is better than how you view your situation. Somebody may be looking at my situation because I have my own apartment because I have a Jeep. You know, oh, Shawnee lives a good life. Or you, know, you I, have your you have your store, you have your merchandise. Right, right, but they don't see what I have to go through. They don't see the hardship. They don't see the tears. They don't see the prayers. They don't see the stress. They don't see the you know what I mean. So that's my point. Like they don't see what they don't see the backstory. They don't see the behind the scenes. No. I used to I used to post like behind the scenes so people could see this stuff is not easy. Even just the fact of people might think oh. They do this podcast. This podcast, must, they make it seem so easy. It must be easy to... No, it's not easy. If you guys only knew the stuff that we went through just for this episode... Because we had to restart this one twice. Twice. Wait, and then we had to restart it twice even before we got started because I couldn't get myself together. So... Well, you know, the grass may look greener, but it is often not greener. And how Tyler Perry says this, even if it's green, like the water bill is higher. And know what I said? Somebody got somebody has brown brown grass somewhere. Exactly. Somebody has brown grass somewhere. The grass is not always green, because <laughs> depending on the type of the time of the year, sometimes your your grass starts to go brown. And brown, depend. And sometimes people their grass may look perfectly green the whole time, but they have down artificial shirts. Exact. That's what I was about to say. That's what exactly what I was about to say. So, um, but you know what I learned recently? That this is this stuff that you can put down. That even in the wintertime, and it's not artificial turf. 
I forgot what it's called. You can put down and can have your grass looking nice and green. Even like when we live in like um different um seasons, like we live in a co in a um on a coast where we have different seasons. Where even when we have go through the winter, where your grass instead of is going dry and going brown and all that, your grass can still stay very nice and green. I forgot what it was called. I just found this out through TikTok because someone was hating on their neighbor because um they thought that their neighbor had artificial turf or something like that because their grass was so and nice and green. Neighbor did have artificial turf. Who can right. Let me the stuff that I find the. I just want being on TikTok and looking at people how petty people are. It's just like Lord Jesus, like why do people care so much about other people? That's what I don't understand. It's a, it, it has to be a need for acceptance. It has to be a need for acceptance because why are you sitting? I mean, I have had people walk up to me and ask me some of the most idiotic questions throughout my life. I have been at a job where the job had a nice size cafeteria and this is I, I'm telling on myself this is, age, this is back before um, smartphones and anything else where you could watch anything anytime on your phone I used to bring my little portable black and white TV with an antenna to work oh my goodness I, was, I used to love those and it wasn't huge but it was big enough no but I know exactly which size you're talking about I think do I still have that somewhere in this house if it does I need to throw it away but I had it, and I would go off into, like, the farthest corner I could go to. I'd eat my, I'd have the TV on. I'd be technically listening to it because I can do two or three things at one time. I'd have yep. the TV on. I'd be reading the book or newspaper and just eating my lunch. And I know one girl, she used to come sit with me, but she understood that, you know, maybe over in our corner, she wouldn't bother. I, we would barely speak to each other. She was just sitting there with me. People would walk up to us all the time. What y'all doing? Why are you watching that? Why are you watching that and reading the paper? How come you're over here in this corner? Yeah. What? What? Oh my goodness. Why is it like that? Why? Because if mommy, someone, I had, I had a coworker who would go upstairs. We had like these um private, private. I wouldn't say it was an office, and what it wasn't quite a room, a, like private booths we had, where you could make phone calls. I had a coworker on her lunch break. She would go into these booths and go to sleep, take a nap during her lunch break. And well, that's her right. What? Why did that bother people? What business is that of yours? She's on her lunch break. She's not well, breaking any rules. But you know what I used to have, Rody? I used to have people do this to me. You know, I don't wear my hair straight often at all. Um... But back then, when I used to kind of wore my hair straighter, um, and when my hair was longer, um, I used to have people, different people, walk up to me and put their hands in my hair and say, oh, oh my God, is this all your hair? Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. 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 I don't know what it is about people. And or people. even now, if I wear my hair in its natural state, which is not like honestly naturally curly, sometimes I have people say, "Is that a wig? Or is what? 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 what um, what hair is that you have in your head?" Whatever I have, none <laughs> of your business. <laughs> I don't know. People are just something. Um, people are something else. So like, it, it, and you can take that example and use it. I know we said a few minutes ago that you overused Job, but it's absolutely correct in the fact that Job was sitting there clearly depressed. Yes. Clearly going through yes. Something, and his worthless physicians of friends are like, well, you must have done something or God wouldn't be punishing you. Just, you know, let's tell us. That's like Rhodey is my homegirl, right? She knows that I do all this encouraging stuff on social media, but she know, also knows what I go through, you know, physically. And she'd be like, Dag, um, Neek, or Dag, Shaniqua, whatever she calls me. Oh, my gosh. Um, you sure you really saved? Are you sure you're really a minister? Girl, I don't know if you should be up there um, preaching to nobody. I don't think you should be up there encouraging nobody else. You should be sitting somewhere getting the courage. Because, honey, you always going through something. You always sick. Why are you always sick? Why are you always hurting? Why you didn't? Like, 
what? Like, I had someone say to me, um, and when you're going through, you don't need anyone to keep putting salt on your wounds. Because you are already, it, it's like I say to people, if you gain weight or if you lost weight, I already saw myself naked in the shower. I don't need you to tell me that I gained weight. I don't need you to tell me that I lost weight. I already know that. So if you don't have something constructive to say, like it's nice to see you or we're praying for you or whatever it is, just keep it to yourself. Really, because you can do more harm than good. And what I've learned is perception is a lot. Perception means a lot. Because, for example, I can say something to Rody, but it could be coming from a, what I could, what I think is a good place. I could be saying something to, I could say something to Rody, but not knowing that Rody may be dealing with this internally. So it could be anything, whether I say it against something about her hair or something about her face or something about her clothes, anything that she could be thinking about eternally and just internalizing it all the time. And I could say something to her and I think it's coming from a good place and I think it's positive. But if she does not receive it as being positive and she receives it as being negative, because this is something that she's dealing with, sometimes... We have to be prayerful about even what we say. Because just because you think what you're about to say is a positive situation, is not always positive because that person doesn't always receive it as such. For example, I've had people say things to me, and I really do believe they thought they were encouraging me. But they really did not encourage me. That's what I mean. But they did not encourage me. What they really did was made, they ticked me off, to be honest. Can I just be honest? They really ticked me off. Yes, you can be honest. That, that's how I felt. Like, the, the, it wasn't encouragement to me. I felt like it was more disrespect. And it really it really upset me. So that's what it made me even more prayerful. God helped me to be very more conscious about what I say to people. And how I say things to people. Because I pastor. I've lost weight over the last year and a half. But I had put on about 50 pounds, and it was depressing to me, and I had people walk and say, oh my goodness, you gained weight. Right. I was having a health crisis. Right. Never once, never once did they say, are you all right, or... That's what I'm, that's what, that's exactly what I'm saying. I've had the same situation too, or now I have people say, oh, you, you, when I, when I'm able to make it to church, oh, you losing weight, I can tell you losing weight, girl, now you got a waistline. Like, what? Why would you say that? Why would you say, and first of all, you don't know what I've been going through in my body. You don't know that. I, some people think because someone has gained weight, and I try to get people out this frame of mind. Don't think because someone may be overweight or obese or just a little heavy that they just sitting there stuffing their, their mouths with um ho-hos and honey buns and cheese. That's not always the case. Because when I put on those extra 50 pounds, which thankfully I have lost, I was... I was doing the polar opposite of putting on a bunch of weight. I was I was eating, but I was eating like a toddler because I thought that was the only way you could lose weight, and I was still gaining weight. And because you wasn't, you probably weren't eating enough calories. Now, I was eating plenty. Of, you know, and it was just the opposite. My my thyroid was all. And see, that's you know, see, that's what I'm saying. People don't realize sometimes people have it, it's this disease. It's a disorder or a syndrome one where. People gain weight. Regardless of what they eat, they gain weight. They can't stop gaining weight. And then there's some people that no matter what they eat, they can't get full. Like, they're never satisfied. They're always hungry. So my thing is, I think as a society, I know we kind of got off topic, but I just think as a society, we should we should just be all a little bit more conscious about what we say to one another and just just have a little bit more grace because what you may be believing god for someone else may not have to believe god for that but they may be believing god for something else and so just because you you you, you that's not a situation you're dealing with that don't mean you get to step all over that person you might be believing god for 
starting a business and somebody else might be able to start a business just like that because their family and friends rallied around them. Exactly. And that Everybody. makes a big difference. That makes a huge difference. Or, or you may be believing God for um, a husband, whereas somebody may have been married 20 years and been praying those entire 20 years to be able to get pregnant. Exactly. So we all just have our own. Sometimes we look at people and think, oh, this person has money. Um, so they, they have it made. Money, yes, money can make your life a lot easier. easier. A lot easier. I'm not going to say it does not make your life a lot easier. But See, money is not sure. the be all to everything. It's not the answer to every situation in your life. Yeah, because to be able to go to the store and not have to look at the register and just be able to go ahead and pay is a blessing. Or to go to the store and not go straight to the clearance rack or not have to sit there and pray and be like, God, please let my car go through. Please let me find some coupons in this store. Lord God, allow your favor to go before me. Allow... These are the kind of praise I be praying. I thought I had forty dollars in my wallet, but it was only twenty. Right, and you see what I have? God, please, in the name of Jesus, allow them to have a lot of sales in this store. God, please, don't let me get embarrassed. And our pastor prays that often. She prays often that the prices go down. Well, I don't know what she prayed, but I pray that often for myself. I've been praying that for years because um, I've I've been, I've been a single mom for. 20 something years. So I've been praying that prayer for years. Oh, always. Um, <laughs> you know, so you know how it is. And, that, and even with that, being a single parent is different than when someone is a, is in a two house, two family household. That if you have two incomes, the kind of faith that you need is different than the kind of faith that we need as a, as single parents. We have that one income of our income. And we truly have to believe God. We don't have another income that we can depend on. We really don't. So, um, today, saying I believe God really got me. And like I said, it's not a one-time situation. Even all throughout the day, I had to keep saying that to myself. I believe God. Because the enemy, does, he doesn't let up just because you start saying, I believe God. You better t- Again. He does not. He does. He does not let up. He does not disappear. He does not go take a sabbatical. He comes at you even harder. The more you depend on God, the more you stand on His word, the more you stand ten toes down on His promises, the more the enemy is going to come after after you. But you have to stand on the word of God. You have to keep saying, "I believe God," or whatever you. Maybe I believe God is not your mantra. Whatever, maybe your mantra is, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Maybe your mantra is, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. Whatever it is, maybe your mantra is, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but my God shall deliver us from them all. Whatever your mantra is, that's what you have to say. And you have to say it with assurance. You have to say it, know it, like with, you know how they say, say it with your full chest. Say it with your whole chest. You got to say that thing. No, no. tell you i just sat back in my chair because let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you i did a slouch in my chair when you said that <laughs> because, the truth. because let me tell you because people not, even, even the most uh faithful church goer isn't always praying for your increase let me tell you i just put that the i said that devotional recently i said be careful who you ask to pray for you because well, everyone you ask it. Something that said, I can honestly say, I don't always listen to her prayers because I don't always have time. I'm doing something else. So that was not something we discussed before the podcast, and I just brought it up. Nope. So, 
Nope. And it wasn't even one of my prayers. It's just something I put on my social media thing. I said, be careful who you ask to pray for you because everyone is not praying um, praying, but how I can't, but pray by saying everyone is not praying for your for your blessings. Everyone is not praying for your increase. Everyone is not praying for God to to show up in your life. Some people are praying for your downfall. If you say, "Hey, I'm trying to get a new," position, and I'm trying to get a new job, and I just studying for the managerial program, which offers pray with me. Don't think everybody that you just said that you was praying for. Let me tell you, some people are praying, God, don't let her get that job. Allow her to fail. Allow her to become homeless. And that's just the truth of the matter. And, and, you know, they'll say, well, allow her to fail and become homeless because I don't know what, like we were saying about people earlier, I don't know what it is with people. People, I've often heard people say, not all the time, but I've often heard people say, well, if you just keep your head down, you'll be all right. Well, that's not the truth. And someone looks the, looks the part does not mean they are actually the part. Some people are just playing the part. They really are. Some people, and just think about it like this. Just because you see somebody that has a nice vehicle, whether it's a luxury vehicle or just a nice vehicle, you gotta realize this. When somebody leaves the church service, how you know that person is not sleeping in that vehicle at, at the end of the day? You better say that again. Some some people are putting are putting things up to hide their windshields, and they have their covers in their in their in their trunks, and they have different things in their trunks. And guess what? They go find a um parking lot, like a Walmart parking lot, and different things, and that's where they sleep at at night in their in their vehicle. The same person that you're hating on, cause you think, cause this person has a Mercedes or a Lexus, or maybe this person has a Jeep or whatever they have. Maybe it's just a to- a nice Toyota. And you you hating on this person, thinking this person has it all because you don't have anything, or maybe you have something that you deem to be a hoopty. You're hating on this person, not knowing this person's whole story. And you are actively wishing them ill will because you think that they have something that you don't. Yes. I absolutely, I think I told Rhody this story. That I saw this on TikTok that this young lady said that she had been friends with this lady for like five years. And and she thought they were best friends. They were supposed to be best friends. Even their husbands had started um hanging out and stuff like that. And she said then she's kinda started know it's like a shift in their relationship. And they kinda had like a power one. She was like, they both just you know, realized, yeah, we need to get better, you know, communicating and stuff like that. And so she said this is the person when she she was trying to have a baby. She was going through IVF, all this stuff. Everything she needed, she would go to her best friend be like, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Bottom line is, whatever the situation is, whether it was something sad, something happy, she was sharing with her best friend. Well, lo and behold, out of nowhere, suddenly, recently, the best friend said, I just have something to tell you because I just can't keep it in any longer. I just need to tell you that. All these years you thought we were best friends. I really was um, hating you. I really was hating you. When you would tell me that you would miscarry or you would lose the baby, I would be so happy. When you would tell me that you were going to get take a pregnancy test, I would be praying that you wouldn't be pregnant. And the person would just like, because the person said she was so jealous of her. And the lady was like, jealous of, I'm sitting over here trying to have a baby, can't get, get, have a baby, and you sit over here being jealous of me, when you have a, a house full of kids? So my point is... It does not make sense. It does not make nope. sense at all. At, at all. At Why all. Why on earth could you be jealous of me? And I, you know, I... Do not, I will tell anybody out there, I do not have a life to be jealous of. But I don't know what anybody's thinking. But that's what I was trying to say earlier, that yeah. you may not think that of yourself, but I'm quite sure there's someone out there that's looking at, on the outside, looking at your life, looking at my life, looking at our listeners' life, lives, and saying, oh, this person got it easy. Whatever they think about, whatever they pray for, it comes easy to them. And you got to realize, just because you hear people testify, testify about stuff in church, or you hear people say, oh, I believe God, I have faith, did it? Just because they say they have faith does not mean they don't have doubt. 
Just because they said they have faith doesn't mean they don't have fear. So you can't always just take everything everyone says as it's like across the board. As if, oh, because this person said they always have faith. Again, you know, sometimes you have to believe God for yourself. Sometimes you have to believe God for yourself. Absolutely. It's not always to let's get the prayer team together and pray for Brother Joe to get a new car. Absolutely. Because like we told you with this podcast. You have to know when to keep your prayer to yourself. Really, because when we told you, we announced that we, not we, when Rhodey announced that we were starting this podcast, we received crickets. Crickets, we got no nothing. Like, no matter of fact, it wasn't even crickets. Cause crickets, crickets, church, crickets. crickets Right, and crickets are louder than what we received. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I won't. I won't even say we received crickets, and we were in church. We were so, in church and told people we were starting a Christian podcast. We got nothing. Nothing, and they don't know all the years it took for us to actually the years that we kept singing. We wanted to start a podcast until the fact that we was like we're actually we're about to we were excited. Because it has been so many years that we've been saying we, we should do a podcast together. We should do a podcast together. We had no clue on how to start a podcast. We didn't know what it entailed. We, we, had, we knew nothing, to be honest with you. And nothing. Nothing. And when we announced it, we got nothing. Really? <laughs> we got what we knew. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, like, and I'm laughing, but I'm, I am want to encourage someone because you may, sometimes you have to keep stuff a secret and just allow your works to speak for you. Absolutely. Just allow your prayers to speak for you. Just allow your faith to speak for you. Just allow your belief in God to speak for you. Because you can't always speak for yourself. You can't always share everything because everyone... Like Vody said, it's not happy for you. So there was um, a woman I was talking to one time, and she said, "I used to cheer for everyone. You know, if they got a house, I cheered for them. If they got a car, I cheered for them. If they got a promotion on a job, I cheered for them. Meanwhile, I was." I didn't have the house, I didn't have the car, I didn't have the job. But when I finally got those things, the people who I thought would cheer for me first because I cheered for them yep. were upset. Yep. Trust me, I understand. Yeah. I understand because I felt the same way because I feel like that too. I'm like, I'm, I feel like I try to cheer for everyone. And even if someone is selling something, I may can't um, do everything, but I'll do even if I say, like, if somebody's see, selling something that's really far out from my 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 budget, I really but just can't. Don't want but but I would if I can if I can if I can financially allow it to make sense, I will support that person even if I don't want it. However, even if it's if something, I, even if all I do is share your page, that's what I was about to say. Now it may be something yeah. where I just cannot financially um, support you. What I would do is tell you, I cannot, right, at this time, I cannot fight. I would love to support you financially, but this is what I can do. I'll be praying for you, and I'll try to support you of uh, um, posting your stuff on my page, on my stories, to try to get people to know know that your, your business is out there, whatever that you're doing. I would try to help you that way. That's what I do. But every, I realize everyone is not the same, and so you just have to take people for... You know how they say Maya Angela says when people show you who they are, believe them. Mm-hmm. Really believe them, and don't try to change people. Believe who they are. Everyone doesn't have your heart. No. Nope. What I mean by that is you'll get really upset because you would fight for that person. You have that yep. heart for that person. You want you know you want only the best for them, and then you expect like most people would. If I was there for them, they should be there for me. I learned the hard way. Nope. Nope. I used to try to text a lot of people, check up on a lot of people all the time. Then I realized, wait, hold up. I'm only getting a text maybe from one or two people to check up on me. And not that you do it so people could do it for you. But when you do it for so many years and you notice that people never like... If you could be out of church for... Right. You could be out of church for four months and they never 
send you a text or anything. Just even if it's one text saying, I may not reach out often, but I want you to know that you, you are always in my prayer. Nothing. It's like after a while, it's like, okay, well, people are showing me that I don't matter to them either. So we're not going to continue to prolong this podcast episode, but we just want to encourage everyone out there that regardless of what you're going through, it may be something difficult. You may be going through some obstacles. It may be some hurdles you have to overcome. You know, you may be feeling like you're between a rock and a hard place. You may feel like your back is against the wall. I always say this to my supporters. When you feel like your back is against the wall, allow that wall to be Jesus and continue to press against him. Mm-hmm. Because if you press against Jesus, Jesus is not going to allow you to fall. He's not going to allow you to collapse. He'll continue to give you the strength. Sometimes you may feel like you're about to collapse, but right when you need it most, you'll find you, yourself getting strength. And that's Jesus giving you strength. So just continue to press against him. And whatever your mantra is, continue to say your mantra all, all the time. Don't give up. On seeing your mantra. Don't give up on believing. Don't give up on having faith. Keep your head up. Continue to trust in God. Continue to have faith in God. Continue, continue to believe in God. And continue to believe in yourself. Believe that you can make it. Believe that you can overcome. Believe that you are healed. That you are delivered. That you are set free. That whatever you need. Jesus has it. And you just have to believe that you're going to receive it. It may not come when you want to, but it'll yeah. come whenever Jesus releases it. Because people say it'll come right on time. I, sometimes right on time. <laughs> Let me shut up. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know what you're about to say. <laughs> people love it. It may not come when you want it, but he's right on time. And you'll say, Lord, I needed that job I applied for. <laughs> Why didn't you give it to me? Because that was a right on time situation. <laughs> and now and now I'm packing my stuff because I got to move out. <laughs> like, you know, so, you know, right on time situation. You know, eh, I always say whenever Jesus releases. God's, God's timing is perfect. Yes, that, 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 that I'll go with. God's timing is perfect. But try not to lose your mind. Yes, yes, waiting. yes. That's all I can say to you yes. in that situation. Yes, and it's true. Why you're waiting. Yes, because waiting people is hard. And we are going to stop in a moment or so. But people think that waiting is super easy. Waiting is one of the hardest things that you will ever encounter in your life. Absolutely. And it is not. Sometimes the wait is short. Sometimes you're. Let's say you're at an amusement park, and if you are. I go, I used to go a lot more than I do now. But sometimes you'd be waiting on a ride for an hour and a half for a 90-second ride. Especially if you're at Disney World. And then imagine you waiting that long time and, and now it's your turn. And they say, oh, the, the ride is broken. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on, uh, we, t- two years ago, we went to Epcot. <laughs> My- most of the rides were moving pretty quick, but we got on the one ride and it was moving super slow. People around us were starting to bail. I wanted to bail. We finally get up, get like close enough to get on the ride, and this kid throws up. So it was delayed even longer. Now, don't get me wrong, that was not a life altering situation, but to have to wait all that long time and then have to be made to wait longer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, how about this? And we are going to close. And I was watching recently, I want to say it was in Mexico. Yeah, I don't know why the people who were in charge of the rides were allowed the people to get on the ride because I, I'm assuming it had just been cloudy, something. You probably have seen this on um, social media. These people were on a ride and they were stuck in the air through a storm. Oh. Did you see it? I didn't see it, but I know it, that has happened. I got stuck on the I got stuck. Did you ever seen Epcot, that big globe? Yes. There's a ride underneath of it. And oh really? They don't really. Think it. Oh yeah. There's a whole like mini museum in there. It has exhibits and all types of things that you can take your kids to. But anyway, there's a ride in there that tells you like you know about the space and everything else like that. It gets stuck often, and people don't 
say it for whatever reason, but you got stuck when we were there. We were stuck on the ride for like 20 minutes. And let me tell you, if you have sensory issues, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's how I felt for these people. I mean, they were stuck in the air through a storm. A storm in Mexico. First of all, let me tell you, I could be on the phone. My pastor knows if she wants me to preach over the phone, I always tell her if it's about the storm, I, if I, as soon as I hear thunder or see lightning, I'm not even giving a benediction. I'm off. She knows that this phone is going to click. <laughs> I'm that person. I'm that person. I don't want to have any electronics in my hand. I don't want to have anything next to me that could, that could attract lightning. I'm that person. I grew up when it was sorry, thunder and lightning, that's God talking. You sit down and shut up. That's the God. And all the kids would have to sit on the steps. We would have to sit on my mom's sofa and be quiet, my brother. And I, we had to be quiet. Sit still. sit still. You don't move. That is God talking. God is working. <laughs> you be quiet. You couldn't turn on anything. You couldn't even turn on a flashlight. Right. So, that, so um, yeah. So I I don't play when it when it's storming. And my thank God the two dogs I have they normally do really well in the storms, but when they do begin to act up, I say, "Listen, that is God speaking. Calm down." So, but we're not going to keep this um, episode going. We we are grateful that you guys are joining us for season two. Um, season two. We are appreciative. We cannot do this without you guys. But as always, please subscribe to not your average church girls with a z you can find that on various platforms including youtube please subscribe share download your friends yes if you like it please tell us yes if you don't like it, if it's something that you don't like please tell us that too so we can grow and get better um Share it with everyone. Share it with your homegirl, your homeboy. Share share it with your hater. They need to laugh. They need encouragement. Yes, because it is not God's desire that anybody be lost. No, no one be lost. You so them, You might want them to be lost, but God does not want them to be lost. We want them to listen, and we want them to be encouraged, and yes. we want them to share the podcast. Yes. So please share Not Your Average Church Girls with a Z. Yes. Please, please do. And we thank you for listening. God bless you. God bless you. And until next time. See you later. Bye-bye.